So today I'd like to talk about the ACT reading section. And why is that? It's because the reading section, like the science section, is a section where students have a lot of potential for improvement in. And many students have a problem with getting that improvement because they have a hard time understanding these passages. And today I'm going to give you the main strategies that I use to attack these passages and understand them every time and improve my ACT reading score by 15 points. So let me explain how this video is going to look. First I'll talk about the main strategies that I use, specifically for reading the passage as fast as possible and getting the right amount of understanding. I'm not just going to give you the generic skimming strategy, but something more in depth and more useful. Second, I'll go over some passage types so you can see how you should approach different passage types and what you need to be looking for. Because there's three main things that you have to look for in every ACT reading passage. But some passages you have to focus on certain things, and some passages you have to focus on other things. And I'll be discussing that for with actual passage examples. And the last thing I want to talk about is common question types because with the reading section there are a few question types that you will see on every single ACT reading exam. And if you know how to look out for them, know how to answer them and approach them, you're setting yourself up to answer them correctly when you're in the test. Before I get into the video, make sure that you guys subscribe and hit the notification bell below so that next time I make an ACT strategies or prep or review video, you get notified. So as you guys already know, um, you're given four passages, 40 questions, and 35 minutes to answer them. So you're in an absolute time crunch. The reading section timing is probably one of the worst on the ACT. So how do you go about saving enough time to answer these questions and get them correct? The main thing you have to understand is that spending time reading the passage doesn't get you any points. The thing that gets you points are the questions. You need to answer questions correctly, and that's what helps your score increase. So you need to spend less time reading the passage, more time answering questions. My strategy is to use two minutes to read the passage. If you need to, then go up to three. But what exactly should you do when you're reading the passage? This is what I call passage glancing. It's kind of like skimming, but I like to think of it as passage glancing because when I was taking the ACT reading section, I would just look at everything. Look at all the words, look at everything that's being said, but don't understand all of it. Don't take all of it in. Just look at it, see where it is, and get the basic, basic gist of the passage and what each paragraph is talking about. So that when you're done reading the passage, when you go on to the questions, you know this paragraph is talking about this, this paragraph is talking about that, or that person, or that event, or this relationship. So this passage glancing strategy helps you do two things. You skim pretty quickly, and you know where the main ideas in the passage are located. Again, don't focus on getting all the main details and ideas because you don't need all of them for the questions. Not every single detail in the passage is going to be asked about in the questions. So trying to understand all those details and all those extra things that you don't even know that you're going to need to answer the questions is a waste of time. So don't do that. Get the basic gist and get enough of an understanding so that you know where you need to look back in the passage when you refer back to it when you're, at, when you're asked a question about some specific detail or something. That's the strategy. Know where things are and skim quickly. And if you skim in two minutes, two and a half minutes, you're given about six minutes to answer the questions. So you're answering about one and a half questions every minute, which is not too bad. The second strategy I want to talk about relates to what exactly you should be looking for. I kind of mentioned this already in the when I talked about the strategy, but there's three main things that you need to be looking for when you're reading these passages. Relationships, events, and emotions. So with relationships, in many passages you're going to have people, you're going to have historical figures, you're going to have a narrator, you're going to have different people, different dynamics, and they're going to be interacting with one another. And you're going to be asked about how those interactions went, how those relationships went, how those interactions or relationships changed over time. So when you're reading the passage and you have characters and that, and that they might be related in some way, whether it's family or friends or whatever, take note of how that relationship develops for the different people that are involved. The second thing is emotions. So again, this kind of relates to relationships a bit, but in general, just look for the emotions that different characters, different figures in the passage are expressing. Maybe it's fear, maybe it's happiness, things like that. Just look for how people feel about certain things, what emotions they feel, and about what things they're feeling those emotions for. Because again, it's going to be asked about in the questions, no doubt. And a lot of the time, if there is a narrator, the narrator will express a lot of emotions implicitly. So, you know, maybe they'll implicitly, you know, try to say something about someone else. Or they'll hint at a certain emotion or hint at a certain feeling that they're trying to evoke in the reader. So take note of those things, whether it's said blatantly or it's kind of, you know, hidden or vague. The third and final thing that you need to look for on ACT reading passages is events. So a lot of passages are going to be stories. They're going to be narratives. They're going to have a storyline. So take note of the events that take place, how they happen, who's involved, things like that. Also, if there's a sequence of events, you might be asked about the chronological order of those events or the causes and effects of those events. Take note of those things because they will be asked about. Looking for events is a great way to passage glance. So when you're reading a story, for example, 
in one of the first two passages of the four on the ACT reading section especially, you can get the basic gist of each paragraph and of the passage as a whole by just taking note of, you know, this paragraph, this event happens, then the next paragraph, this event happens. That helps you get a better understanding of not just the passage's content, but also its organization. All right, let's move on to the passage breakdowns. So there's four passage types you'll see on the reading section, prose fiction, humanities, social sciences and natural sciences. I like to divide those up into two categories. The first two I just refer to as the humanities and prose fiction category, but the last two I refer to as the sciences. So social sciences and natural sciences, those might be about history, about some scientific topic, um, some research, it could be anything like that. But the first two are totally different from the second two. Because of that, it's better to focus on different things while you're passage glancing so you get the best understanding possible. But with the first two, with humanities and prose fiction, I like to look for relationships and emotions because those two things tend to be the main theme of those two passage types. That's where you'll see a lot of the stories, narratives, you'll see a lot of first person narration being done. And so there's a lot of emotions and factors and relationships that take place. So focus on those things most on how people feel about certain things, how people feel about each other, and how emotions develop as a story goes on. All right, so this is a typical example of a prose fiction passage that you're gonna get on the ACT reading test. On the newest exams, this one's actually gonna be referred to as the literary narrative. And also keep in mind that the humanities passage, which is gonna be the second or the third one that you see, is very similar to this. So the literary narrative slash prose fiction plus the humanities are both very, very similar. And that's where you're gonna be asked about and see a lot of those themes related to relationships between people and also emotions. So this is a good example of just that. In this particular passage you're seeing, um, if you wanna read through it, it's, it's all about this man, Mr. Bingley, and he's entering this party uh, for the first time. No one really knows who he is and everyone's kind of admiring him and try, you know, admiring different traits about him, noticing you know, how he interacts with people and he makes some interactions with people and people observe you know, uh, his character and they make judgments and state opinions about him. And that's kind of what's documented here. The relationships and emotions that I wrote down that you can read through and, and you can see my annotations, those are all basically observations that people made about this man. And those are what I counted as relationships because really an, a person's opinion of someone else is a relationship. A person's expression of an emotion based on an interaction that they had is an emotion, right? And those are the things, those are the key checkpoints within these type of passages that you need to keep tracking and that you need to understand. Those kind of drive the storyline and the perspective and the tone of the passage, which is asked about in questions for this particular passage type and the humanities passage type. So hopefully that makes sense. Keep track of essentially what are the interpersonal relationships? What are the dynamics between those relationships? And how do those relationships evolve over time? If you read this one, you'll see that with the relationships across the board, they start out as very positive here and they turn into very negative here. And in this transition period right here, this is where a lot of those questions in the in, in the in the, in the the 10 questions following this passage will kind of be based. Now with the last two passages, what I like to focus on are relationships and events. So the relationships that you focus on are a bit different than the first two passage types because in the first two, it's more of more personal and more human relationships. In these last two, it could be any kind of relationship. It could be a relationship between uh, an animal and its prey. I got a passage like that one time on a test. It could be a relationship between a plant and its environment. It could be a relationship between one event in history and another. So it could be anything. So take note of these relationships and how these things kind of work out, how they're related compare, contrast them. And then focusing on events is a good idea as well because if it is a scientific passage that's describing a process in nature, for example, or if it's a historical narrative, again, those events become very, very important to understanding how the passage develops and what you're gonna be asked about on the questions. This is a typical sciences passage, specifically a natural sciences one. Um, social science passages will be similar in that they'll be about scientific topics like factual information, history. Um, they'll talk about experiments, studies, stuff like that. And that's exactly what this one is. This is the history of thermodynamics. Thermodynamics, if you're not familiar, is a, is a particular science of like heat studies and whatnot. So what this one is doing is just talking about the history of that and the developments that were made over time, you know, from 19, uh, from 1650 all the way to 1679, all the way to here, to here, to here. So all those developments are discussed. And with each one, this is where, like I said, the relationships and the events kind of come in. You wanna keep track of what are the different events? When do they happen? What's the order of them? And how are the different events related? So what's the difference between an event here and here and here and here and here and here? And are there any cause and effect relationships? Are there, what's the chronological order of those events? That's kind of what these passages are based on. And that's what the, the, the understanding of them is gonna be rooted in. So keep track of that. Make sure you understand that as you're reading these type of passages for social science and natural science, um, 
as well as any relationships that might pop up between the different figures, in this case, just the different events that take place. But those figures could also be um, objects, animals. They could be any sort of scientific topic or item that's discussed. All right, and lastly, so we'll talk about the common question types. So there's four question types I want to discuss here. The first and probably the simplest is the main ideas question. This is the most straightforward question type because it's just asking you what is the main idea, main purpose, main intent of this passage that you've just read. And it could be in the form of what was the author's main intent when they wrote this? Or what is the purpose of this passage? So if, as long as you have a basic understanding of what the passage is trying to say, any emotion or uh, intent behind it or purpose behind it, you can answer this question correct very easily. So the second question type is the details question. This is all about finding those specific, really specific things that you might not necessarily pick up the first time you just glance through the passage. And the passage glancing technique works perfectly for this if you get that basic understanding of where the main ideas in the passage are located. If you generally know what each paragraph is talking about, then you will have no problem coming back to the passage or looking for those details if you need to and answering those questions very quickly. So just practice that technique and I cannot stress enough how important it is to get the understanding of where those main ideas are located. Um, as for what kinds of things you'll be asked about, um, for example, you know, how did the author feel when this specific event happened? Or which of these following events happened first? Things like that, really specific things you don't really pick up as you're reading. So again, focus on getting the basic gist and coming back. The third question type is vocab. Um, these are very easy. You do not need to know any words before coming into the test. It's all about context. So questions will ask you about what does this word mean? And then they'll give you four definitions of the word for your answer options. And they'll all be correct definitions of just the word itself. But the correct answer is going to be the one that is correct in context of how that word is used in the passage. So with that, you're going to have to refer back to the passage almost 100% of the time when you're asked about those vocab questions. And once you plug that word into the passage, you'll see exactly what the context is and what it means. And you can choose your option from there. The fourth and final question type I want to talk about is the author's intent question. So these focus on understanding and reporting why the author says certain things and what kind of emotions or effects they're trying to create by the things that they're saying. A very, very common example of this is the author says this in the passage in order to convey blank idea. So you'll have to fill in that blank and say they're doing this to provide this explanation or they're doing it to evoke this emotion. So again, to answer these questions, it comes down to passage glancing effectively. And specifically for these, you'll have to focus on why the author says certain things, understand the significance of the thing being referred to, and the emotions that the author is expressing, if there are any. If you understand that well, understand why the author says what they're saying and what they're trying to say, if there is a narrator, then that'll help you a lot on these kinds of questions. All right, that's all we have for today's video, guys. If you need free ACT practice tools like practice exams, we have six that are linked in the description below for free that you can access on our website at any time. So be sure to check those out there. Also, if you have not subscribed yet, be sure to do so so you get notified every time we make a video. And apart from that, guys, I'll see you guys in next week's video. Peace.